I'm still trying to understand exactly what the root cause of it was, but I've come to the conclusion of probably an overproduction of mucus, which started with I got mono at my ballet school. I was training in Uruguay in South America, and the whole ballet school was covered with mold, all different colors of mold. It was really unpleasant. My classmates and I were exposed to this every single day. So I think that's where it really got bad. Yeah, because it was just right there. We would lean against a hallway wall and then we'd come off of it and we'd have the mold spores all on our leotards, which was just disgusting. Yeah, it wasn't great. And it's very normal for a lot of houses and buildings there to have mold. So I think it's just kind of overlooked, but it's quite a severe health condition. So it disrupts your mucous membrane. So I think that's where it really started for me. Hello, everyone. I'm Adam with Carnivore Today. Today we're with Olivia, also known as the Carnivore Ballerina sometimes, which is really cool. So Olivia, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, my name is Olivia. I'm 21 years old. I do ballet. I also work with um, alternative health um, platforms. I've been Carnivore for two years now as of this January. Um, yeah, and always learning, learning more about health and how to help my health and other people's health through lifestyle, diet, all that. Yeah. Very cool. So you've been carnivore for two years. What actually led you to the carnivore diet? Yeah. Um, a lot of different things, which, um, a lot of people I'm sure can kind of resonate with when you're, you have a bunch of different health conditions and all these symptoms, you don't realize how severe they are until after looking back, you just kind of normalize it because if you're dizzy or you bend over and you look up and you see stars and you're kind of like all over the place, that just kind of gets to become a normal. Um, so looking back, I think I'm, I'm still trying to understand exactly what the root cause of it was, but I've come to the conclusion of uh, probably an overproduction of mucus, which started with I got mono um, at my ballet school. I was training in Uruguay in South America, and the whole ballet school was covered with mold, all different colors of mold. It was really unpleasant. So uh, my classmates and I were exposed to this every single day. Um, so I think that's where it really got bad. Yeah, because it was just right there. We would lean against a hallway wall and then we'd come off of it and we'd have the mold spores all on our leotards, uh, which was just disgusting. Yeah, it was it wasn't great. And I yeah, I don't know. I, it was, It's very normal for a lot of houses and buildings there to have mold. So I think it's just kind of overlooked, but it's it's quite a severe health condition. Um, so I think that's where the, because it just, it disrupts your mucous membrane. So I think that's where it really started for me. Um, so that created a long list of different symptoms. And then apart from the mold, I did have heavy metal poisoning and most likely with heavy metal poisoning, you get parasites as well. So then I had those two things too. And that was kind of what led me down the health rabbit hole when I just got really inflamed and put on a lot of weight. And at first I thought it was just hormonal things. You're growing up. It doesn't matter. And then it got to a point where I would either eat absolutely nothing or overindulge and nothing changed. And I thought, okay, it has to be something other than just what I'm eating. Um, so then I tried keto. I tried animal base. And then finally in January of 2022, I just went full carnivore. Um, yeah. How did you find out technically about your issues with mold and, and and things like that did you go to the doctor to try to figure things out or yeah um luckily we've always been kind of we don't really go to conventional doctors but in um so it all started in 2017 was when i began going to this ballet school um i was fine because our school had two different schools one of them was a lot moldier than the other and for the first year i wasn't really in the overly moldy one um, but in 2018 was when we moved to the really moldy one. And then in 2019, it got a lot worse. Um, but I think it was in the beginning of January of 2019. I was I wasn't feeling so great towards the end of 2018. So we got these blood tests and we found that I had um, lymphocytes, which, if I remember correctly, are an overproduction of white blood cells that your body creates as a reaction to 
something that's targeting it. So if you have an immune response, if you have um, an autoimmune disorder, your body would create that as a way to combat it. So we saw that I had that and I also had um, heavy metal toxicity and it was iron. That one was partly my fault because we did live off grid on a farm three hours away from civilization. Um, and we had well water and it was the ground had a lot of iron in it and I was too stubborn to use a water filter. So I was just drinking in all of this iron. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how I got that. Um, but yeah, so we did go to a doctor for that. And I'm not 100 percent sure because I was 16 at the time. I don't think I remember they, the doctor probably told my mom like of a certain drug or something to take. I didn't take anything because we've always been kind of trying to find an alternative natural route unless absolutely necessary. So I began taking, I think it was like spirulina and some other algaes and things like that as binders to get rid of the heavy metals. Um, and at the same time, we did go to a Chinese medical doctor and also did some uh, acupuncture, which really helped. But then the moment we stopped going and doing those things, it did get worse. So yeah, that was a bit of how we found out and started looking into it. Wow. Okay. So what were kind of some of the symptoms of uh, the mold exposure? Yeah, I have to, <laughs> I had to write them down because once you don't have them anymore, you kind of forget. Um, I right. would get these, yeah, these migraines and headaches. And I remember because in ballet training at the end of the year, we have, um, we prepare for this exam. It's kind of like a choreography. And then it's just a very basic ballet class. Um, I was getting these severe migraines towards the end of it where I was like sitting and watching everyone do it because it was just too painful that I couldn't really just focus. Um, so I would get these headaches. I had chronic fatigue and brain fog, so I couldn't remember very basic things from even like the previous day, like what I ate for lunch yesterday. I couldn't even remember that. It just was like a blank in my head. Um, so that I would have a bit of like eye irritation sometimes. Um, yeah, mucous membrane. So my voice was very nasally and really unpleasant. It was like I was holding my nose when I was speaking. Um, wow. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't great. And I also got a bit of like, um, not anxiety, but more so depression. So I was very depressed and overly gloomy about everything, um, in life. But yeah, the fatigue was mainly the, the thing that had happened that was the most impactful because um, I I was doing my ballet training. So we have a ballet class. We have a point class. We do a uh, repertory where we learn different ballets. And it was usually five to six hours a day. And towards the end of that year when everything was getting worse, I had to drop everything because I just had zero energy to do it and only do the most basic one hour and a half ballet class so that I could pass the exam. Um, so that was the most, yeah, impactful that I noticed. Wow. Okay. So you've got these issues with mold going on. And what about the heavy metal poisoning? Did you notice any specific symptoms in regards to those or was it kind of more the same? Yeah, it's kind of the same. Um, I think everything got a lot worse, probably with the heavy metals and the parasites um, in 2020. We moved from South America to Croatia. Um, and I'm. My guess is I got parasites because I ate some raw fish and then also some more uncooked, not well fish. And you can eat raw fish in different ways and also raw meat, but um, I think it really depends on the quality. And nowadays I wouldn't, for the most part, trust the quality. So I think that's where I originally got them. And I've kind of tracked it down to the raw fish because the day after I ate it, um, my skin just blew up with this like allergic reaction. And I thought, it's fine. After a week, it'll go away. I'm not really sure what happened. And what I thought would be a week's worth of an allergic reaction turned into what looked like eczema, some other skin condition that lasted for, I think it was a whole year and a half. My whole right side of my face also just blew up with this big skin issue. Um, oh, and my then, goodness. yeah, that was not fun at all. That's a big indicator for sure. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was, yeah, I wasn't happy because I was kind of depressed. I had the skin issue and I was overweight for ballet and that just kind of all three of those things just finally after, I think it was like almost two years, um, 
finally just led me to, I have to do something about this. And then that's when I fully found carnivore and wet carnivore. Okay. Awesome. So once you started carnivore, what benefits did you see right away? Right away um, was the weight loss. I didn't really care about the skin issues. Um, I just wanted to lose the weight because as a dancer, you have to be a certain size. And I auditioned for this one company. Um, and initially they told me that they just wouldn't take me because I was too big. So I thought, well, I'm going to prove them wrong and just lose this weight. And I don't care about the skin conditions because a lot of people cover it up with makeup on stage and things like that. Um, but I did notice the skin improved significantly. But it wasn't, even after being six months carnivore, it still wasn't stopping outbreaks. So then finally I thought, okay, there has to be something else because I'm doing carnivore. I've seen all these people heal it. They don't have issues anymore. Um, so then I began looking into my past, uh, what I was exposed to when the dates of when, um, when I started to have these symptoms and when skin condition started. And then I realized it was probably the mold the parasites so then i looked into how to detox from these things and then i detox from them and then that's when it really was a game changer for me okay very cool so when you talk about weight it's kind of hard to imagine with you being a ballerina that you ever overweight so what is overweight considered for a ballerina yeah i uh i came to realize that my version of overweight is probably not as overweight as like um at least in the united states so i lost a about, I would say around 45 pounds. Um, I was just overly large for, I think, a normal person. Um, but for a ballet, yeah. it was, it was very devastating because you're constantly, I was every single day getting comments on it and we're standing in front of a mirror wearing almost nothing every single day, trying to pick apart what we're doing wrong and what looks wrong about ourselves. Um, so it was very mentally taxing for me in that regard, but looking back, I probably was not as large as a lot of other people that are trying carnivore to lose weight. So, um, yeah, so at, from a ballerina's perspective, I was very large from a normal person's perspective. It wasn't quite a huge big deal. So 45 pounds is actually, that's a yes. big deal. You'll it, feel that for sure. Yeah, you <laughs> You'll feel it and you'll see it. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty big difference. Right. Yeah. And, and so will the whoever's lifting you up, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's another thing is that you have to be a certain size and also just have the energy to help your partner and have enough respect for them to be able to lift you. Yeah. Right. Wow. That's awesome that you were able to achieve those health benefits. So in terms of your mold symptoms and, and, and issues and your heavy metal symptoms and issues, have those issues gone away? Yeah, um, they went away for a while. And then we moved into this house, which I'm in right now. <laughs> um, and they kind of came back and I had put on a bit of weight and I was wondering, okay, there has to be something wrong again. Maybe it's the environment. I know the air quality here is not good. So I think that's also not helping. Um, but we came to realize that the vents were filled with mold. So we had to have that, have that all cleaned out. So that was about a month ago that we finally realized we are exposed to mold here. Um, so we cleaned that out and now I'm re-cleaning myself. So re-detoxing again. So it's a constant um, cycle of having to work on it. But I think a lot of people everywhere now are kind of exposed to plastics heavy metals and mold so i think it's going to be a constant probably once a year detox of all these different things hopefully things get better for you for sure uh, it sounds like you're on the right track and you have the the tools and the ability to make certain that you're healthy yourself for sure and and your family that's really cool yeah. so on the parasites issue can you kind of elaborate a little bit on that like what kind of a treatments did you re receive for that or it was it just a carnivore diet yeah, for parasites, those are pretty tricky because um, you do definitely need to take something. Carnivore definitely helps with that. Um, but you need to actually take something because it does need to physically come out of you. And it's really just disgusting going down that whole parasite rabbit hole. But um, carnivore diet helps because parasites and also mold, um, they live off of anything that's damp. So if you're eating sugars, any form of carbohydrates that becomes damp inside of you, then they can live off of that. So once you remove all that, it's helping to kill them off because you're killing off their supply. 
but then they can also take out your minerals and vitamins however you're um digesting them so it's really depleting yourself and your body of any minerals and nutrients so you're just feeling overall terrible um so that's where going carnivore alone won't fully help that you do need to take something so um there's a bunch of different tests that you can do we mainly did urine tests you can do stool samples um, even sometimes some blood tests work as well saliva tests depending on the type of parasite there's like hundreds of different types of parasites um there's good bacteria but i'm wow. still the belief that there's only bad parasites i know that there's a lot of the raw primal community that might disagree with me on that but i yeah I'm, i still think <laughs> still think a parasite is just a parasite and you need to get it out of you um, but yeah so there's a bunch of different things that you can take um some of the more natural ones be i know that a lot of people will take ivermectin I don't, I just personally don't support drugs in the pharmaceutical industry, so I won't take that. Um, but you can take things like bentonite clay, also helps with the heavy metals, uh, activated charcoal, diatomaceous earth, oregano oil. Um, so I've taken all of those different things. And the reason why you want to take a bunch of different things is because after taking uh, one binder or thing for one week or roughly like 10 days, the parasites kind of become immune to what you're taking so then you need to just hit at them with something new to surprise them give them a shock so that they can't continue to reproduce and live inside of you so yeah okay nice so you're like a military general against these parasites inside your body <laughs> yeah i gotta tell them to go there take the thing that's gonna <laughs> kill them and then just get them out yeah that's awesome i love that so we'll we'll switch gears for just a minute. So I follow you on Twitter and you seem like you're pretty diehard carnivore. So how diehard or hardcore carnivore are you? Yeah, um I've I've experimented with a couple different things in the past two years. I'm not gonna say that I've been fully carnivore. Um I don't plan on staying fully carnivore forever. I think that there should be a certain level of you should heal from a certain thing so that you can tolerate. Um, different things. That being said, I wouldn't eat a bunch of raw vegetables. I think that looking at history, cultures prepared certain dishes and foods in a certain way so that it was more digestible, whereas nowadays people are just eating a bunch of different things, such as beans raw, which is just very dangerous. Um, so right now, I'm fully carnivore, except that I take electrolytes, which have stevia. Um, and every once in a while, I'll have a tiny bit of honey um, and I have coffee. And that's about it that I can think of. That's not carnivore. You're, you're pretty hardcore then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think in the future, it would be nice to include like more spices and things and probably a bit more of, uh, I guess, honey. But that's about it. Yeah. Okay, cool. So... When you first transitioned to the carnivore diet, was there any uh, challenges that you had or anything like that? Um, not really. Before going carnivore, so when I first got those blood tests all the way back in the beginning of 2019, I tried keto then, and that lasted for about two weeks. And then because I was watching a bunch of different keto videos online, I eventually got Sean Baker recommended to me. So I actually tried carnivore then. Uh, but we were traveling around, so it was difficult to find just good quality meat that wasn't overly expensive. So it was a lot of processed meat, so I wasn't feeling my best. So I was kind of sticking to carnivore with some chocolate. And then eventually that turned into um, from, I think it was late 2019 up until 2022. Uh, it was more so like an animal base. So I wasn't really eating any vegetables. I wasn't eating any vegetables, um, except for probably some herbs and spices. Um, I was just eating meat, chocolate, um, some sauces, and that was about it. So it wasn't a difficult transition because I was already used to a very, I guess, limited diet. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I was more motivated to do it because I thought I need to just fix my life and I don't care what it's going to take. I'm just going to do it. So yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't difficult. Oh, very cool. So what does a typical day look like for you in terms of eating? 
Yeah. Um, so now it's kind of turned into I eat twice a day. Um, I train pretty early in the morning, so I'll eat breakfast at probably 7 a.m. And that's just one egg and a burger and butter. So that's my meal until roughly 4 p.m. Um, and then at 4 p.m., sometimes I'll have a steak and butter, um, ground beef. Yeah, it's a lot of beef, eggs, and butter. And that's about it. Um, yeah, I think I eat around a pound of meat per day in total. And that's about it. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm basically the same. I just recently cut out eggs um, because of the histamine in it. And I don't eat bacon either because of that. So. Yeah, I've heard several people say, uh, yeah, they've cut out the eggs, specifically the egg whites. I don't know if you're doing egg mm -hmm. yolks. Um, I was doing egg yolks and whites, um, and then I, I cut out the egg whites, and now I've just cut out eggs altogether. So I'm mm -hmm. trying to get to the root of this histamine issue. So <laughs> Yeah, I know. Well, hopefully um, I'll find it. Yeah, I hope so. I know that um, James from, um, oh my God, I don't remember the name of his podcast, but he has one. His like logo is all red, but he fixed his histamine intolerance with, I think it was like taking probiotic yogurts or something, but he's fully carnivore except for, I think it was like some berries or something because he did have um, oxalate toxicity. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I hope you, hope you heal that. Wow. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's switch gears again and talk about being a ballerina. So when did you actually start doing that? Were, were you very young when you started? I, yeah, kind of. I started when I was about two and a half or three, just doing a lot of very recreational. So kind of like skipping around. And that was most of the extent of it until I was um, seven. I did a lot more gymnastics, um, horseback riding and tennis more so than dance. Um, and then we moved. So I grew up first of all in Jordan and then we moved to Uruguay. And then to Croatia. Um, and now we're in wow. the US. <laughs> yeah, so we've been kind of all over. Um, but so when we moved from Jordan to Uruguay, we couldn't really find a good ballet teacher. We went to one studio and she was like a former dancer with the company there. She was supposed to be really well trained and giving good classes. At least that's what we heard. And so my sister and I, we went there and it was a one hour class and typically ballet classes are supposed to be an hour and a half. And she said that girls are too, they get too bored by doing ballet for a full hour. That half an hour was, <laughs> half an hour was uh, saved for ballet and half an hour was saved for dancing however we wanted to Rihanna. Um, so we kind of just <laughs> gave up. <laughs> we kind of gave up after that experience. Um, and I didn't, take up ballet again until I was I think like 13 and a half we found a studio um during that time I was dancing at home alone I don't really include that now because I had no idea what I was doing I was just like mimicking whatever I saw on the on tv um right. <laughs> and, yeah and then finally when I was 14 I heard about um the National Ballet School which is supposed to be the best school um in the country and they hold um, auditions, which is kind of like an interview. You go and you take a class and then they eliminate you after a bunch of different rounds based on whether they think you're good enough. And I think I was very bad. Um, so I think what got me into the school, because I was accepted, um, was I looked very different. And people in, I think, most entertainment industry, they're looking for someone that looks different for on stage for whatever it is. Um, and I didn't realize how serious and nervous I should be for an audition. So I was just really happy and smiley and like staring down all the judges. So I think that's, yeah, what got me into it. But the, uh, yeah, so the professional training didn't begin until I was around 14. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. So you've been essentially around the world. What, what has that experience been like? It's been interesting. Um, I, it's, it's nice. Because now I can come back to the U.S. So I've never really lived into the, in the U.S. up until I think it was like last March, end of March, we moved here. Um, but yeah, it's great to see a bunch of different cultures and things because then you have a lot more appreciation of how, um, 
how accessible everything is here in the U.S. You can go out and do anything. Um, and also how easy it is to, whether it is you want to have a career, a business, start a company, whatever it is, it's a lot easier here um, than in other places. So I guess I have a lot more of an appreciation for that after having lived in a lot of different places. Okay, very cool. Yeah. Well, you definitely speak very good English for not have living lived here for very long. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So you said uh, that, it was a little bit uh, dicey with getting into uh, the, uh, what was it, the ball ballet school? Yeah. Um, so, and, and they were looking for somebody different. So what exactly was different about you? Was it, I mean, like, was it a good different or like, oh, she looks like a villain and we can cast her in the role of the villain? <laughs> um, I think it's more so. <laughs> yeah, I would hope not. Um, I think it's more so. Playing. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the most of the South Americans, at least the ones that were in that particular aud audition, they were a lot more tanned. They had dark hair. My hair used to be a lot lighter. So when I was very small, I had very white blonde hair. And over the years, it just got darker because my mom has very dark hair. Um, mm -hmm. So I think I had blue eyes. I was very pale and I had this blonde hair compared to everyone else that was very dark, had dark eyes, dark hair. So I think that's what mostly stood out, or at least that's what I think from what I... Right. That's what I think. <laughs> I hope that was... <laughs> right. Well, that's that's cool. Yeah, I just want to make sure I'm not talking to a villain here. <laughs> no, not yet. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so it seems like you only did the carnivore diet in the U.S., is that correct? Uh, no, I was, so after living in Croatia for about a year, because, uh, my parents are American, so I'm an American, I'm, I'm an American citizen. Um, there's only so long that you can say, stay in Croatia unless you have a working visa or something of that sort. And I was 18 at the time, so I couldn't get any of those. So we moved mm -hmm. from Croatia to Serbia. Um, so my carnivore <laughs> diet started in Serbia and then we moved to the u.s and it's continued since okay was it was it uh still just beef back then or was it some kind of crazy food over there that they have uh it was pretty much beef um they did have very good lamb so i was doing a lot of beef lamb and also chicken um and then yeah so we've been traveling like all over the place so we visited Hungary for a bit, and then I went back to Croatia because that's where I was doing most of my ballet training. So I had to, after training in South America, I trained again. I had to kind of restart my training because it was a whole different style with a uh, a Russian teacher. So the Russian method, which is not easy to switch to. Um, so we moved from Serbia back to Croatia once we could um, for the visa. And in Croatia, they have a lot of turkey. So we kind of maxed out on turkey. I think it was all of last December, December of 2022. Um, and January of 2023 was just turkey. And that was mainly it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Thanksgiving and December and January. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it was <laughs> fun. Yeah, I, I missed that. <laughs> awesome. So in terms of your performance as a ballerina, has carnivore diet helped you in any way? Yes. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been life changing because I had almost no stamina um, and it was. It was kind of devastating because I couldn't really dance. Um, so in 2019, when I had to drop all my classes for the exam, we did have to because we were in an older level, so it's more advanced, you have to do the full exam class, which is a ballet class. And then all of us, all of my classmates, um, we had to perform a solo, which is between one to two and a half minutes. And in ballet, that just seems very endless and you're just exhausted by the end of it. So I remember by the time I finished my solo, I exited the room and I just fell on the floor. And I think my classmates thought I was just being silly, but I could, I physically just could not get up or move because I was that fatigued. Um, wow. And now, um, actually this past December, we did the Nutcracker and I was able to perform a two and a half minute solo, which was 
very exhausting. It's, it was one of the most difficult ones. It's the Russian sugar plum fairy, which is the most difficult version of it. Um, plus, right before that, a five minute long partnering with. Um, so I was dancing with uh, a partner. And then right after that was a one minute of coda, which is where you have the famous turns where you're spinning on one leg for a long time, plus jump. So I was able to do all of that, which is roughly 10 minutes long. Um, it still felt fine afterwards, whereas before, a minute and a half just completely winded me. So it's performance-wise been life-changing. So I have to bring this up. So I just recently went to a, a dance, a professional dance show, and it's called Shen Yun. Have you heard of that? Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a meme in the dance world. They're marketing because it's everywhere. <laughs> so yeah, I know. Oh my and gosh. Yeah. It, there was so much marketing. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, okay, let's go see what this is about. And it was cool, but you know, there was kind of some overtones, like religious overtones in it that I was like, this is a little strange, but uh, the dancing was cool. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, I've never been. I've seen it everywhere though online. Their marketing budget is just amazing. I don't know <laughs> what that is. But <laughs> yeah, it seems like they spend every ounce of profit that they have on marketing. I don't know where it comes from. Yeah. It's yeah, it's everywhere. I like turn a page on a flyer, just like walk down the street and it's everywhere. Um, but yeah, I know that they do like a lot of acrobatics, but I did not know that about like the religious. That's didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Just so you know, if you if you go there. Uh, so they talk about it's uh, in China, you know, pre communist regime and. Uh, you know, thousands of years, they're taking you through this story. Well, like four of the i don't know what do you call them sets yeah uh where they do like a an act or whatever um four of those sets out of like 12 were all in the modern day and it was all like some religious and political message <laughs> it was very strange everybody's looking at each other like what, <laughs> what's going on here <laughs> i thought it was but, supposed uh, to yeah, like old traditional folk tales or something that they were telling. But that's, I wonder if they've always yeah. done it. Yeah. Well, further investigation after the fact. Yeah, my wife did some investigation and, and it, is a, it is a religious uh, organization based out of uh, New York. Okay. <laughs> so if you ever want to look up something interesting, just go ahead and look up the, the history behind it and what it's all about. And then, then you'll know if you want to uh, actually apply to be a dancer on the show or not. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah, I was thinking of going because, of course, I'm seeing the marketing everywhere. But it's yeah, I wasn't expecting that out of it. I was kind of expecting more of like a Cirque du Soleil type of thing where it's uh, maybe they have their own storyline and it's just kind of a production. Uh, but yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. For sure. In terms of your YouTube account, you seem to have been focused somewhat on the carnivore diet and now maybe you're not as much. Do you have any uh, ideas as far as what are your future plans in, in terms of you YouTube or? I'm not really sure. <laughs> um, I love, <laughs> I just, it started out being a lot more carnivore focused, but now I'll just find something interesting and I'll just post about it. Like um, I recently, I think it was like, a week and a half or two weeks ago um the studio that i'm with we all traveled to denver and we were competing in a competition um for ballet and ballet costumes are very expensive and i love to sew so i wanted to just make my own so then i thought well it would be interesting for someone that's on a budget whether it's a mom or someone my age who can sew or younger doesn't matter um, if they want to know how to sew a costume, it'd be interesting to share this. So anytime that I find something interesting like that, I'll just post about it. So it's kind of been more so like that. I don't really have any goals with that as of yet, but it's been something I've been trying to think about what exactly I should be doing. But yeah. Yeah, I love that. I, I actually forgot about that. I was going to bring that up because I've actually seen some of those dresses that you posted. Um, and those those are absolutely incredible. I mean, that, those look like, $10,000 dresses or, or more, you know? Yeah, it did. It took a fair amount of work. And um, the pink one, which is uh, like a traditional ballet tutu, took me three tries. So I recreated it three whole times to finally do it wow. where I liked it. Yeah, because I had it almost completely finished. 
and then one morning because i i kind of liked it and then one morning i just woke up and i looked at it and i just thought no it looks terrible and i have to just redo it um <laughs> but yeah it, it took it took a while <laughs> i can't imagine having to redo that even one time let alone it's... twice good lord <laughs> I mean, they're the... so intricate yeah, it did, it was a lot of yeah, because everything was all hand stitched. Sometimes a lot of costumes, because it is very time consuming, so it costs a lot more. Um, they'll just buy like lace pieces and just kind of sew it on, so you already have like this piece patched on. Um, but I hand stitched everything instead of doing that, which that would have saved me a lot of time. Um, but once you have like things to listen to, like podcasts or something, or watching YouTube videos, you just get into the zone and stitch. That's awesome. I love that. Very cool. So let's uh, switch gears back to uh, the diet. So in terms of the mold and uh, heavy metals and things like that, is there some things that people can kind of look out for uh, to maybe make sure that they're not being exposed to these things or maybe they think they are? Is there some things that they can do to check on that? Yeah. As for the heavy metals and parasites, one thing that I didn't look into until I was really researching it is your nails. So if you have these white lines that go across horizontally, uh, that can be an indicator. Sometimes if you just have the, the speckles or the dots, that could just be a nutritional deficiency. Um, I think it's zinc and calcium, which is that deficiency. But if you have actual lines and if you look at it like this and you have actual ridges, that's a definite sign that you most probably have heavy metals um, and parasites. As the mold, I would look into if you have the, I think it's post-nasal drip. So you constantly just, it's not like you have a lot of mucus, but it's just every once in a while you'll have a drip and it's just really inconvenient. So if you have that, you would most probably have a damaged mucus membrane, which could be caused um, most likely by mold. It could be... Um, yeah, most yeah, most probably mold or environmental toxicities. Um, so it's definitely worth looking into if you have a malabsorption of most different symptoms can be traced back to these different root causes. But if you just can't absorb things, like if you can't put on weight, if you can't lose weight, I would definitely look into the heavy metals and parasites and then also mold. Um, if you have any form of skin condition, it can be a rash, it can be acne, it doesn't matter where on your body it is, if it's on your head, on your face, on your hand, um, I would look into the heavy metals and parasites. Um, yeah, if you feel off balance, that's a huge one as well, because you just, your body is just, you're not with it. And that could also be a nutritional deficiency or mineral deficiencies. Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. those big indicators, which... A lot of people do actually have, and they just think it's normal, um, but it's not. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got me thinking. I, <laughs> I need to make sure that I get, get some tests going on for sure, just to make sure. Yeah. So okay. what kind of test, kind of test could people, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just going to say one last thing is if you have the eye floaters, um, that would be a big indicator as well for all three of those things. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Okay. Interesting. So. What kind of test could somebody do? Like, is there a specific name for those? Um, and also, can you send those to me? And I'll link those in the description below. Sure. Yeah. Um, so as for the urine test that I did, um, we have a machine, which is called a Rife machine. And you can do many different types of tests. So you can take a nail. You can take a hair. Actually, hair hair tests are great. Um a lot of these different tests that you would do for these, you'd have to do with a functional nutritionist or a uh, probably a, med a, a chiropractor. Some chiropractors do the nutrition aspect too and look into these different things. Um, but you could just go and ask them for what tests would be the best. But I would look into stool tests, definitely. Um, and the thing with a lot of these tests is that they might come up with absolutely nothing, but you'll still have all these mm -hmm. symptoms. And what happens with if it comes up with nothing is that if you have a, a test come out with, yeah, nothing indicating anything wrong, um, that test, I think, only accounts for the past three months when you could have something sitting in you from years ago. But maybe it's kind of worked through, but it's not fully out, but it's not showing up in the test. So you would have to um, either consult with a functional 
practitioner or something of that. But so uh, stool tests, some blood tests, um, hair tests, whether that's hair follicle or just a strand of hair, um, some urine tests, saliva tests. There's a lot of at-home saliva tests that you can do, even if you just do um, spitting into a glass of water. I think um, if it just stays clumped at the top, that's fine. If it has like these strings falling down, then that would indicate either a yeast overgrowth, parasites, um, even potentially mold. Um, but yeah, I'll have to find and send you some of the other tests. Okay, very cool. Yeah, that should be helpful to plenty of people for sure. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah, definitely. So anyone, anyone that uh, has issues that are similar to what you had, you know, what, what advice could you give to those people that uh, could help improve their situation? Yeah. Um, I think the best way to go about it is to, depending on the person, um, I personally would just jump into it overnight, switch to carnivore. Cause it's, it's, it's also depends on the severity and how strong you are to deal with these different things. Sometimes some people they can't deal with their body just can't deal with something. So Either if you're very sensitive, slow transition into the diet, or if you're kind of still strong and your body can handle these things, I would just go overnight just to give a shock and just get it done with. Because at least with myself, I find that if I slowly ease into something, I won't ever fully do it because I just won't. Because you always have access to whatever it is. And you're just like, oh, this one small amount of carbs or whatever it is. It'll be fine. I'll do it tomorrow. Um, but I think starting off with more so a lion diet because you're removing all dairy, um, eggs, chicken, all the other things that your body might not be able to digest as well. And if possible, I would stick with grass fed organic ground beef. Um, stick with that. Ruminant animals. So lamb, bison, elk and beef. Maybe after two weeks to a month, switch to a more lax version of that so you can add in some i would stick with butter and ghee i wouldn't really include dairy until a bit later um because if you do have mold and you have the mucous membranes issue where it's damaged most dairy will just continue to kind of irritate that unless it's raw so if you include some raw dairy if you have access to that i would not mind including a bit of that but you don't want to be eating chunks of cheese and milk with every single meal um, so I would start off more strict and then ease into um, other things. It's also different if you have the support around or not. So, yeah, got to stay strong on that regard. Yeah, that's very good advice. So what future plans do you have in terms of your diet and health moving forward? Yeah, um, I've been... As for my diet right now, I'm still dealing with the lovely mold exposure that I've had in this house. So I'm sticking more so strict of just having the electrolytes, which have uh, stevia. Every so often, I'll have a bit of honey in my coffee because um, coffee depletes you of your minerals. So you're kind of remineralizing it with adding the honey in. So that's the only reason why I'm having the honey. Um, so I think I'm going to stick with that for now. Um, after May, because I'm going to be competing again in May, I think I'm going to begin to experiment with a lot of things. I don't want to switch things up any time before then or before I'm doing anything uh, more so extreme. So I think after then, I'll begin to think about adding in probably more so fermented vegetables like pickles, sauerkraut, things like that. Um, I don't really know if I would add anything else other than that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's if I could add sauerkraut back in, that would be cool because they have well, not not really because they have a sauerkraut festival close to us, and uh, they have sauerkraut donut donuts, sauerkraut pizza, and sauerkraut Sundays. <laughs> the Sunday, yes, the Sunday sounds gross, <laughs> but I it's think... actually uh, it's actually a baked potato with sauerkraut on it and uh, cheese and bacon. <laughs> that's the Sunday. Yes. Interesting. It's one of their marketing ploys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would have yeah, I would have thought the least appealing thing would have either been the pizza or the donut. 
but the Sunday. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so yeah, I'd love to have sauerkraut again, but not not in those fashions, obviously. So. Yeah, just along with the meat. Yep. <laughs> so where can everybody find you on the internet? I know you're on Twitter and YouTube. So is there anywhere else that people can find you? Yeah, I'm on almost everywhere except for Facebook. And I okay. I used to buy Carnivore Ballerina, but um, I've changed it to just Olivia because I have Stevia. And I didn't want everyone started calling me. Everyone that I met started calling me that. So I thought I'm just going to go with my name. So, yeah, I'm everywhere now um, as just Olivia spelled in a certain fashion, um, not the normal Olivia. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love the way that your name is spelled, too. It took me a minute to try to decipher it and figure out exactly what it was. And uh, <laughs> I heard Dr. Baker say it on his interview with you. And uh, I'm like, oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense, Olivia. <laughs> yeah, it's different. Um, yeah, a lot of people get it mixed up, which is fine. I got used to it. That's awesome. I love it. Well, I don't think that you've lost your carnivore card because you had stevia. So, but you may end up reaching a wider audience with your channels uh, by not having that, uh, potentially. So, um, I don't have that option. Carnivore <laughs> today is pretty pretty niche so that's that's where i'm sticking i'm not going to be throwing any dresses or anything like that soon <laughs> well yeah you're so, more carnivore yeah right so olivia i truly appreciate you and i thank you for coming on today and especially you know sharing your thoughts and your experience on mold toxicity heavy metal toxicity parasites and the issues that you had result, you know, that you sort of resolved around that. And I'm sure that you're going to help many with this. And I appreciate you and thank you for your time. And we'll meet again. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me on. I enjoyed it. <laughs>